How's it going guys? Will here. It is a beautiful evening and today, as per your request, I'm going to be showing you how to take incredible photos using only your iPhone. Right now I'm walking towards a spot where I love to take photos. It's simply just a field. Oh wow! Actually no, I've just spotted something that we could get an incredible photo from. There's some hay bales in that field over there. The sun is very much setting right now so I have to be quick. But in this video I'm going to take you through tips, shooting, editing. This is going to be the whole master class on how to get incredible photos using only your phone. Let's go. Okay, we are at the field. All right, so here we are. You can't really see much of the field right now, but that's gonna be changing very soon. And generally the first thing you need to think about when taking photos with your phone is the limitations. For example, the dynamic range, the detail, cause you can't shoot raw, the lack of any zooming capabilities, cause we are gonna be shooting completely stock. None of those moment lenses. They do look super cool and they'll certainly help you level up your smartphone photography. But today we're not gonna be using any of those whatsoever. The phone's gonna be completely stock. So the first shot in today's catalog is this shot that I actually already got. Of these hay bales behind me, I got it from the gate over there. And when I took that photo, my main focus was on the dynamic range. My first tip is shoot at sunset or on an overcast day. This is called the golden hour, and it's basically like shooting in easy mode. All the shadows are super flat, but with this photo, which I'm gonna show you how I edited later on, it was shot in direct sunlight. In fact, it was shot at Alton Towers in the middle of the day. I was waiting in line for like 70 minutes to go on the Wicker Man. Great ride, by the way. If you live in the UK and wanna go to Alton Towers, the Wicker Man is definitely a great ride. I just snapped it and edited it for fun and it turned out really nice so in certain situations where you're going to be really crushing the blacks and the shadows you can get away with harsh light but in general shooting at the golden hour is just easier. My second tip for you is of course to use leading lines. If you've already done photography then this should be super obvious but I know when I put out that video a lot of you were saying you were noobs at photography so this is a really powerful trick to getting your photos just looking incredible. I personally use leading lines all the time, not only in my photography, but also in my tech videos. The purpose of using leading lines is to just draw the viewer's eye to the main subject of the photo. What does this mean? Well, in general, this means you should be using leading lines, but they shouldn't be the main focus of your photo. If we take a look at this photo I took in the airport, you can see some leading lines, and I do really like this photo, but I think I would have liked it just that little bit more if there was an interesting subject at the end of the lines. To combat this, I went into town earlier, and I am very sorry for all of this. It was a complete disaster. Right, okay, so I went into town on my own to take this photo and ran into some of my friends. But I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna roll what I got. It is a complete disaster. Hey Alex, remember the last time we tried to shoot a phone video? Yes I can do. Oh wait. I forgot what this bit. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm testing the iPhone for photos. Or all cheer. My cigarette's gone out. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean that was only directly in my face. So we're coming up on the first location. It's a bridge that I shot the Mavic Air video at. It's got some nice leading lines. I'm gonna take some good photos, I suppose. <laughs> Those two won't because they have Androids. That's the joke. <laughs> oh. Alright, so we got the tasty B-roll of the bridge. Low That's budget enough. documentary. Yeah, like directly under the archway, but we gotta wait for... Yeah. <laughs> we are literally in every single person's way. Right, so the first technique we're gonna talk about is leading lines. Here we have this bridge. In the bridge, we're just gonna line him up. Could you turn to the side, please? Fantastic. Got some Pokemon Go content here. Is this Ali A? Alex, are you the Pokemon master? Fuck no. Catch you later, dude. See you later. I gotta get back now. See it. Right, so I'm heading back to my car now. Just saw some friends, brought them in on the shoot. Kind of wish I uh, hadn't. I have no idea if any of that's usable whatsoever. Have my friend Alex on the camera, who's actually helped me out with some videos in the past. He's actually gonna be helping me out with the video in a few weeks. But this was very, very impromptu. I totally didn't plan for this. So I think we might as well finish this video back home because my parking is about to run out. <laughs> What on earth is that? So yeah, that could have gone a... Uh... That could have gone considerably better. All right, so now we're gonna focus on the actual technical aspect of taking the photo. You're obviously gonna open your camera app. Honestly, I just use the stock one. I know there are some great third-party ones and I am gonna be talking about that later, but me personally, I can just use the stock app. Now, it's very simple to use. There's very little that can go wrong, but my first tip for you is don't 
and I really mean this, don't zoom in digitally. I use the iPhone 7 and I know some of the newer iPhones do actually have two cameras, so you can get a telephoto view, but something I constantly see people doing is I see them just pinch to zoom in on their screen. Don't do this, do this in post. If you wanna get closer, do this in post. Just do it in post, it's just not worth the quality loss. Okay, so I'm an idiot and I accidentally deleted the last video clip which contained two more tips and just the introduction to the shooting. So the third tip, I think it was the third tip, is if it doesn't look good, move closer. This might sound a little basic, but honestly, often just moving closer to the subject can completely transform the photo. And while this is a general photography tip, this does definitely apply to shooting with your phone. Seriously if you don't like a photo, move closer to the subject and just try again. I guarantee it will look completely different. My final tip is more specific to phones and this has to do with exposure. Because of the way highlight photography works on phones, if you ever have to choose between the sky or like shadows in the trees, you should always, always choose the sky. Generally, I found with phones you do have a little bit of leeway when it comes to underexposed spots, but you blur out that sky and the detail is completely gone for good. There's no way you're going to recover it. Seriously, just expose for the sky and recover those shadows it will make your photos easily look 10 times better all right so now it's the fun bit look where I am actually let's go shoot then let's get into the editing right so that was amazingly fun. Now we're getting into my favorite part, which is for sure the editing. Editing, it just brings a photo to life, so obviously it's gonna be my favorite part. We're gonna be using two apps. One is free, one is paid. We're gonna be using Lightroom Mobile, and we're gonna be using Snapseed, which is actually the free version provided by Google. Now, both of these workflows are very similar. I'm gonna be going over both, but LR Mobile is just my personal favorite, and recently it's got really good, so that's what I've been using to edit almost all my photos in. First of all, I'm gonna be showing you how to edit in Lightroom Mobile, but first, we need to set it up so we're gonna have to go back to my studio and import my presets. All right, let's go. Forgot to loosen the tripod. All right, let's do this. Okay, so to send your desktop presets to your phone, first of all, open up the cloud-based version of Lightroom, click edit and import presets. I'm using the Peter McKinnon 2017 pack because I really like them, but you can use any really. Hit the cloud icon and you're done. So the first thing we're gonna do is obviously open up our Lightroom app, which I'm gonna be doing on my phone. And the first picture we're gonna edit is this one of the hay bales, of course. I love this photo, I really like the light and I love the way the hay bales just shone in that evening light. And the first thing I usually do when I edit my photos is I crop them. So this was a four by three, and we're just simply gonna crop it to a 16 by nine, because I think that's just, it's just easier to use that way. Okay, we got our composition nicely. Now here is where I would often line it up. We got it pretty straight, but I'm just gonna adjust it, yeah, just that little bit. And next is where the fun begins. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll through till we see this thing called presets. Now, I imported my presets. Technically, they're not my presets. It's the Peter McKinnon 2017 pack. I really love the presets in that pack. I strongly recommend you get it. But we're simply gonna go through the different presets till we find one we like. Now, I like Dolomite, but it looks a little weird in this photo. You can see some artifacting, definitely. Heatstroke is one of my favorites. Very contrasty, looks great. Maritimer looks interesting with this photo. I rarely ever use Maritimer as a preset, but it definitely looks interesting with this photo. We have Macchiato. I do love this preset and I'm gonna be showing you where I use this preset later on in the video. But for this one, it just doesn't suit it with that evening light. There's also Red Crust, which is probably my favorite out of this pack. It just looks so good. A bunch of my thumbnails have been edited with this preset, but for this one, we're gonna use Kodak Summer, which, no, not Kodak Summer. We're gonna use Heat Stroke, which is basically the same thing, but just slightly more contrasty and slightly less crushed. There we go, already this looks a thousand times better. But you know what would look even better? If we had just adjusted the colors in the sky, so we're gonna hit mix, that blue icon there, we wanna adjust the blue, so we're gonna shift the hue more towards the teal, because I think this gives, I think it contrasts better with the grass, doesn't look as intrusive to the rest of the photo, and there we go, I would almost say that's done. Next, we're gonna go into the light, now we can see the presets sort of boosted this, and it's got this nice fade in the shadows, as we can see. I like that, so I'm gonna leave that how it is, but the one thing I do wanna change is I do wanna just slightly boost those shadows so we got that we're gonna add them 
28 looks good, I think. Yeah, so this photo already looks incredible. Again, while I was shooting, I made sure everything was in focus. I made sure the sky wasn't blown out. That's one of the most important things when you're trying to take good photos with your iPhone. Make sure the sun isn't blown out. Highlights are much more difficult to recover from with iPhones because they have this tiny sensor, so you don't get a great highlight roll off. You don't get a ton of dynamic range, as we talked about earlier. And so you really want to prioritize the highlights and then bring the shadows back up in post. Honestly, I think this photo is done. I really like the way it looks. So so yeah, we can go ahead and export that, which I'm going to do. I'm going to click Save to Camera Roll, Maximum Resolution Available. It's just going to take a moment. There we go. <laughs> All done. Now the next photo we have is of my friend Connor on the bridge. Now I really like this photo as it is because it's got this nice leading lines. It's nicely exposed. Nothing's blown out in the sky, but the subject is underexposed. I don't think we'd be able to recover those shadows without completely like destroying the image with noise. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the lack of dynamic range to our advantage. And essentially the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do our crop and we're going to throw on a preset. Now this time, I think we're going to use Red Crush. No, change my mind. Again, we're going to be using Heat Stroke, but instead of keeping him like sort of lit up, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the light and completely crush the shadows. So we're going to drag those down till he's almost looking like a silhouette. You don't want to crush the blacks too much though, because that will just look super weird. And we're going to mess with the curves and add just a slight fade onto the image without looking too ridiculous. That looks terrible. I want to add a little bit more contrast into those mid-tones, bring this node over to there, add a little bit more fade again. And I'd say that's pretty much perfect. What we really want to focus on is the composition. So what I might want to do is I might go into the geometry, add these lines, these are basically used to straighten up an image if it's not looking great. I like the way it's positioned with this photo, so we're going to leave it as it is. But if we wanted to straighten up the image, then, then this is how we would do it. We use these lines, and I use this all the time. I kind of like how that looks. Maybe, yeah, whatever. For the sake of this tutorial, we will leave that as it is. Oh, that looks incredible. I'm so glad we did that. Final thing we're going to do, I don't quite like how the highlights don't pop as much. So we are just going to increase that ever so slightly. We're going to drag the whites up a little. Again, I think we might adjust the sky so it's just less blue. And we got the photo. Oh, that looks amazing. This is why I love editing photos so much. You can turn a mediocre photo into something so nice really quickly. I still haven't got over how well the lines work with that one. We're going to just make sure it's dead on. So I have just adjusted that slightly. And there we go. Oh, that might be my favorite one so far. Definitely going to be exporting that to the camera roll. In this time, we can probably wait for it to stop raining. It's been raining all day. I just got back, as I said, I just got back from Portugal and it didn't rain once there, but here it's just been, just been non-stop. So next we have a photo that I've already edited. Now, I really liked how this turned out. I used a slightly warmer preset. This was a top down from one of the most amazing breakfasts I've ever had. I had it in a marina in Portugal. Genuinely amazing food. But what we're going to do is we're going to reset this completely and I'm going to show you exactly what I did. So the first thing I did, this wasn't quite straight, so I did straighten this. Now, the one thing, the one problem with doing this on an iPhone is that it's really, really difficult to get your control points in the right places. This is where the iPad Pro really shines. Using Lightroom Mobile, I definitely think it would be easier with the iPad Pro. So we're also going to want to drag one along the top in this instance, which you can do. And there we go. The perspective is all set. Very good. I actually use this feature in the desktop version all the time. It's really helpful for when you're taking pictures of things like phones. You can just straighten it so it looks perfect in the image. Now, this looks very dull. So again, we're going to go with presets. And this time, we're going to use the avatar preset. I really like this one for like warm looks. We're going to sharpen it a fair amount because we do have that placement. And I really want just everything in this image to pop. So yeah, 60 points of sharpening. And that looks great. If we zoom in, we can see the bubbles in the coffee, we can see the placemat, we can see the knives and forks. That's just another example of how powerful this tool is. Editing your photos very much is the best way you can get the most out of your iPhone camera. Okay, we're done with Lightroom now. I'm going to take a quick break because I've been filming for 20 minutes and my throat's going, but we're going to return and I'm going to show you how to do a very similar thing, but this time for free. It's always nice to be able to do something for free. All right, I really need a break. Oh! 
So I'm back after my short little break. I went to see my dog, had a cup of coffee, the regular break things. And now I'm going to show you how you can edit your photos for free on your phone and get them looking incredible. Sorry, it got super dark and I was having to crank my eyes so I just went to go get this light. Now we are ready to start creating some amazing photos for completely free. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is open up Snapseed. Now once you do, you'll be greeted with this light grey screen. All you want to do is allow Snapseed to access your photos. Then we can start editing. So, so Snapseed already has a fair few almost preset like filters, but we're not going to be using those. We're going to go into the tools and the first thing we're going to go is tune image. So as I did previously, we're going to completely crush the shadows on this, almost creating this like silhouette effect. Now the perspective in this one is a little bit more difficult, but I'm still going to have a go. You know what? That actually wasn't terrible. Fair enough. Fair play to you. This is a free app by the way. We're also going to rotate it to straighten it. There we go. Again, very easy. And now we're going to head into the color grading. So for this, I personally like to use the grainy film option. There's a ton of different tools within Snapseed, but I really like the grainy film because I always like that filmic look. In fact, a while ago, I used to grade all my videos using a tool called Film Convert. This basically does the same thing, but for photos. So I'm going to pick one that preserves the sky. A04 looks good. I'm just going to bring down that style strength just a little bit, maybe 70. That looks good to me. Then we're gonna add a little bit of grain, maybe 40 points of grain. And I honestly think that looks really good. It's not identical to the previous one, but I really do like the grainy look to it. So I'm gonna export that. Okay, there we go. Now let's do this photo of the watches next. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop the image. I'm gonna go 16 by nine as we usually. I'm gonna line up the watches so they have pretty much exactly the same amount of free space. And this photo was exposed really nicely so I don't really have to mess with that. We're gonna go right in with the grainy film and this time we're gonna go for a more purpley look. I actually, I like LO4, that looks really good. I'm actually gonna get rid of the grain on this one. I'm gonna drag down those highlights just just a little bit because they have really popped with that preset and honestly I'd say that looks good as it is. I am going to add a touch of sharpening though. A photo like this really relies on detail so I am going to add a little bit of sharpening just to make it pop. Okay, there we go. We have the finished photo. So now we're going to export that. Okay, so we got this lovely photo. We got the leading lights. I actually shot this in the airport. I was running and gunning like crazy. I was walking along, dragging my suitcase behind me, just my phone up going. It was a challenge, but I'm really pleased with the way that it came out. So the first thing we're going to do again is I'm just going to crush those shadows a little bit, not as much as we have previously. And I'm actually going to bring down the highlights again. I'm going to bring up the brightness and I'm going to add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of saturation. And there we go. Look at how much better that looks already. It doesn't take a lot of time to take a photo from being mediocre to much better. It's so, so simple to get some really good looking photos simply by using your iPhone. And by the way, Snapseed and Lightroom Mobile are both available on Android and iOS. I'm using an iPhone at the moment, which is why this video has been made in the way that it has. But I've used Snapseed on Android for ages and it works just as well. All right, guys. So thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this and smash that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for 10k. The 10k special will be coming up very soon along with another phone review so stick around for that. But for now though I'm done and I will catch you guys in the next one.